As I disembarked from the small boat, the frigid Norwegian air stung my face. My name is Alastair Saxon, and the shadows had dispatched me to the remote village of Rain, nestled in the Lofoten archipelago, to confront a chilling scenario. Rain, with its traditional red houses perched on the waterfront beneath towering mountain peaks, had always been an alluring location for tourists and adventurers alike. But a sinister shadow now eclipsed its scenic beauty. I was here because the village had a werewolf problem, but not just any problem. The nature of the challenge was almost poetic, if you can call such horror poetic. As I stepped onto the pier, I was met by the village elder, Lars. His wrinkles were like the lines on a well-used map, and his eyes held a sadness only one who had seen so much loss could fathom. Alistair, we've heard of you, he said, his voice breaking the eerie silence of the icy surroundings. It's good that you're here. Lars led me to the village hall, where a makeshift assembly had gathered. I could feel the weight of dozens of eyes upon me, their expressions a mix of hope, skepticism, and palpable fear. Before I could inquire further, Lars began detailing the twisted game the werewolves had instituted. Every full moon, the pack of eight werewolves comes to our village, and we are forced to select a villager to participate in their wicked hunt. The selected individual is taken to an ancient stone circle, exactly 50 miles away from rain. Deep within the frozen wilderness, Lars's voice trembled as he spoke, his eyes distant. The person is then given a two-hour head start, beginning exactly at sunset. Once the two hours have elapsed, the werewolves, now transformed, embark on the hunt, their howls announcing the start of the chase. If the selected individual manages to return to our village gates before being caught, the werewolves have vowed to leave us in peace. But no one has ever won this cruel game. They always catch their prey, often within sight of the village, tormenting us with their near escape. I absorbed his words, feeling the horror of the villagers' plight. The very specificity of the hunt, the calculated distance, and the cold, methodical rules sent a shiver down my spine. This was a game designed not just for sport, but for psychological terror. My stomach churned at the sheer terror of it. Yet, the game fascinated me. Such calculated cruelty was unusual behavior for werewolves, especially in their transformed state. It indicated a certain sophistication and intelligence making them all the more dangerous. Why not simply leave, relocate? I ask, glancing at the assembled villagers. Lars's face contorted with emotion, a combination of pain and pride. This is our home, our ancestors' land. We cannot simply abandon it. Moreover, these creatures will merely move to another location, continuing their reign of terror. My respect for these villagers deepened, understanding their unwillingness to abandon their heritage. However, the grim reality was that if I failed to end this deadly game, there might not be a village left to save. We have tried everything, Lars continued. Silver bullets, traps, even seeking assistance from local mystics. But the pack always seems to be one step ahead. We believe they have a leader, a cunning and old werewolf who dictates their strategies. As I stood on the edge of the village, gazing out at the vast, snowy expanse that seemed so serene in the dimming light, a wave of realization washed over me. This deceptive calm hid lethal perils, and I was about to throw myself into the midst of them. The enormity of the challenge weighed heavily on me. And for a moment, I felt a pang of doubt. Lars's hand on my shoulder brought me back to reality. Are you sure about this, Alistair? He asked, his eyes searching mine. I looked at him, 
then at the assembled villagers, their faces etched with fear, hope, and desperation. I knew that I couldn't turn away, that I had to confront this evil. But it was more than that. It was personal now. A challenge had been laid, a gauntlet thrown, and I was answering the call. Taking a deep, steadying breath, I turned to face them all, my voice ringing out clear and strong, filled with a determination that surprised even me. I'll volunteer for the hunt, I declared, my words echoing in the silence that followed. The room was still for a heart-stopping moment, the villagers' eyes fixed on me, wide with a mixture of shock, disbelief, and perhaps a glimmer of admiration. They had lived under this curse for so long, accepting the terrible terms of the werewolf's hunt as an unchangeable fate. My declaration seemed to pierce through that resigned acceptance. Then, slowly, the tension in the room began to ease. Heads started to nod in approval. Shoulders that had been tight with fear and anticipation began to relax, and I could feel a renewed sense of hope beginning to stir among the gathered crowd. Murmurs of support rippled through the room, and eyes that had been dull with despair now sparkled with the possibility of triumph. The game was on, and I was the player. The stakes had never been higher, and the villagers knew it as well as I did. But now, they dared to believe that victory might be possible. With a newfound determination, the villagers began to file out of the town hall, their steps more confident, their voices filled with purpose. The challenge had been accepted, and together we would face it. Lars sat down with me, spreading a tattered map across the wooden table, his fingers tracing the path I would have to take. This journey is fraught with perils, Alastair, he began, his voice betraying a hint of worry. You'll start at the ancient stone circle, where the ground is firm and covered with patches of snow. Follow the narrow trail north, and you'll find yourself in a dense pine forest. The trees there can provide some cover, but the werewolves know it well. They've trapped many in that very forest, he continued, pointing to a winding path that led up into the mountains. The terrain gets rougher as you ascend. There are hidden crevices, slippery slopes, and precarious cliffs. A misstep could be fatal. However, there are also caves and overhangs where you might find shelter, if only for a moment. Lars's finger moved to the map's icy blue lines, representing rivers and streams. Crossing these will be treacherous. They're fast and cold, and the bridges are few and far between but they might also confuse your scent trail. Finally, he showed me the last stretch, a barren, windswept tundra leading back to the village. This is the most dangerous part, he said, his voice almost a whisper. There's no place to hide, and the werewolves will be at their most desperate. Your only hope is to outpace them, to reach the village before they close the gap. As Lars finished, I studied the map, absorbing every detail, every potential hiding spot, every peril. This was not merely a path, it was a battlefield, a maze of danger and strategy, and I had to navigate it with my life on the line. As the night deepened, casting a ghostly pallor over the snow-covered landscape, the tension in the village grew palpable. The near full moon hovered in the sky, casting eerie shadows and an almost electric sense of anticipation hung in the air, tinging every breath with excitement and dread. The howling of distant wolves announced their approach, and a troop of eight werewolves, all in human form but with a feral glint in their eyes, made their way into the village square. They moved with predatory grace, their steps synchronized, exuding a menace that left no doubt about their lethal nature. Leading the pack was a particularly large and imposing werewolf, his features sharp and aristocratic, 
his eyes cold and calculating. He introduced himself as Greyhold, the Alpha of the Pack, and with a voice that resonated with authority, he addressed the gathered villagers. People of the village, the time has come for the hunt, he announced, his words carefully measured. You know the rules. One of you will be chosen to run, to try and escape our pursuit. You have until sunset the day after tomorrow to reach the wolf stone at the center of our hunting grounds. From there, you must traverse the icy terrain and find your way back to this very village, a full 50 miles. He paused, letting his words sink in, his eyes scanning the crowd before settling on me. I understand that you have chosen a volunteer this time, an outsider. How intriguing. I stepped forward, meeting Greyhold's gaze without flinching. I am Alastair Saxon, and I have accepted the challenge, I replied, my voice steady. A murmur went through the werewolves, and Greyhold's lips curled into a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Very well, Alastair Saxon. Be at the Wolf's Stone before sunset. You will bring nothing but your shirt, pants, and shoes. No weapons, no armor, no tools. If you succeed, we will honor our pact and leave your village in peace. If you fail, you will join the countless others who have tried and fallen. I nodded, accepting the terms, fully aware of the perilous journey that awaited me. There was no room for doubt or hesitation. The challenge had been laid, and I had taken it up. As the werewolves withdrew, leaving the village to its thoughts, I began to prepare mentally for the ordeal. The rules of the hunt had been outlined, the path set, and the dangers known. The game was afoot, and I had to be ready. The villagers offered their support, their faces etched with hope and worry their eyes reflecting the gravity of what was to come. I was their champion, their hope for freedom from a cruel game that had tormented them for too long. I knew I carried their dreams on my shoulders. The weight was heavy, but I was resolved to carry it, to fight, to survive, and to win. The night was young, but the chase was drawing near, and I could feel the call of the wild echoing in my soul. The werewolf hunt. The next 24 hours were marked by intense planning and deliberate execution. My mind was a swirl of strategy, tactics, and determination. The issue of the scent was addressed first, with an added layer of complexity. I was aware that the werewolf's acute sense of smell might betray me, and I suspected they were likely tracking me already, analyzing my movements and ensuring that they didn't fall into any traps. With this in mind, I swapped clothes with one of the village's fishermen, whose strong fishy odor would mask mine. To compound the deception and further confuse the werewolves who might be observing me, I spread my clothing among several other villagers weaving a tangled web of scents across different paths and locations. While out with the villagers during our hunting and gathering excursions, I began setting my traps, all the while conscious of the werewolves who might be observing from a distance. In a densely wooded area, filled with thickets and twisted trees, I rigged snares made of strong, thin wire. I carefully wove them into the natural landscape, hiding them among the undergrowth and shadows of the branches, intending to catch a werewolf's limb and slow them down. The snares were designed to tighten with a werewolf's movement, entangling them and costing them precious time. Further along the path, in an open patch surrounded by tall evergreens and blanketed by fresh snow, I recognized a place the werewolves would likely cross. There, I dug a deep pitfall, its bottom lined with jagged rocks and concealed with a thin, fragile layer of snow and branches that matched the surrounding terrain. A fall into this trap would surely delay my pursuers, leaving them struggling to escape the hidden menace. 
navigating to a narrow pass between two towering cliffs covered with patches of ice and treacherous footing, I embedded sharp spikes fashioned from silver, a substance known to harm werewolves. I positioned them at varying heights and angles, so even a scratch from these hidden spikes could cause serious trouble, potentially weakening and slowing a werewolf's advance. Lastly, in a region known for its echoing acoustics, a place where sound bounced off the rock walls creating haunting reverberations, I set up tripwires connected to small explosive charges. Hidden just beneath the surface of the snow, these wires were nearly invisible, and a trip would create loud, confusing echoes. The explosive sound would ricochet off the mountains and valleys, startling and disorienting the werewolves, adding to their confusion and giving me a better chance to elude their relentless pursuit. Throughout all of these preparations, I moved with the utmost caution, always aware of the possibility that the werewolves might be tracking me already. I erased my tracks, used the wind to my advantage, and continuously checked for any signs of pursuit. Back in the village, my nights were consumed with studying maps, familiarizing myself with every nook and cranny of the terrain. I absorbed all the information, visualizing my journey, playing it out in my mind until I knew it by heart. As the next morning came, a crisp chill in the air and the pale light of dawn signaling the impending challenge I knew I would soon have to make my way to the Wolfstone. The village was abuzz with nervous anticipation, and the weight of what lay ahead pressed on me. Amidst my preparations, I also took time to engage with the village festivities. With the snow crunching underfoot, I interacted with the children as they tossed snowballs and played, not wanting to burden them with the dread the rest of the village faces. My face breaking into a smile as we built a grand snowman, complete with stick arms and a carrot nose. We laughed together with genuine warmth, their innocent joy bringing a lightness to my heavy task. These were the people I was fighting for, their simple pleasures, a poignant reminder of what was at stake. The memory of their laughter would be a comforting thought as I faced the terrifying chase that awaited me. While I took this moment of levity, I had instructed the villagers wearing my clothes to crisscross around the countryside, leaving pieces of fabric here and there. It was all part of a grand scheme to confuse the werewolves, both before and during the hunt. I knew that any who were tracking me now would be thrown off, and those who would hunt me later would be equally perplexed. My journey to the Wolf's Stone was one of contemplation and preparation. It was a full day trek through the dense Norwegian forest, every step taking me deeper into the territory of the werewolves. The path was treacherous and covered in snow, winding through towering evergreen trees that formed a natural cathedral, where silence was a prayer to survival. As I walked, my mind drifted through the layers of strategies and countermeasures I had woven into my plan. I knew the werewolves were cunning and sophisticated, and Greyhold, their alpha, was a formidable foe. This wasn't just a physical battle, it was a psychological one. Upon arriving at the Wolf's Stone, a massive, weathered boulder that stood sentinel at the edge of the village territory, I was met by the imposing figure of Greyhold. The Alpha's eyes glinted with an intelligence that was both human and wild. His stance and demeanor were commanding, yet there was a curious respect in his gaze. Greyhold's voice was a deep rumble as he addressed me. You have courage, human. Few would willingly enter our game. Do you understand the rules? Do you accept the chase? My response was firm, my voice steady. I understand, and I accept. May the best hunter win. Greyhold nodded, his expression inscrutable. May the moon guide you, human. You may start when the sun drops below the horizon. We will not be far behind. 
With that, Greyhold turned and disappeared into the shadowed forest, leaving me alone with my thoughts and the imposing wolf stone. For the next hour, I meditated. Seated atop the cold stone, I focused on my breathing, calming my mind and centering myself. This was a time of absolute concentration, a preparation of my mental and physical state. The world around me faded as I visualized the path ahead, the traps, the terrain, and the pursuit. I felt the weight of the village's hopes, the gravity of what I was about to undertake. But I also felt a sense of clarity, a confidence in my abilities. As the sun slowly approached the horizon, casting a golden hue over the snowy landscape, I rose from my meditation, feeling a unity with the land and an understanding of the hunt's nature. The chase was about to begin and I was ready. In the distance, I heard the faint howls of the werewolves, a haunting melody that promised danger and excitement. The game was on and the stakes had never been higher.